In this video, you're going to learn to animate a transformation from one thing into another. This could be from a human into an animal. It could be from an animal into a human, animal into another animal. It could be an object into an object. You can use it for anything. Your only limit here is your imagination. I'm not just going to show you how to animate a morph because that's pretty easy. I also going to give you tips for how to make it look good. So how to animate a transformation in style. I love to start my day with a cup of coffee. So it's fitting that this video is sponsored by Trade. By filling out their quiz, they were able to prescribe me the best coffee for my preferences. I really enjoy this coffee because it's more than just a flavor. It's a coffee experience, a delightful coffee experience. But what I like about Trade in particular is that their roaster ethically sourced their coffee beans. Their supply chain ensures that money reaches the farmers who grow them. They match you with how you best like to drink your coffee. They're roasted to order, so they're always fresh, and the pricing is the best for coffee of this quality anywhere. Trade is giving the first 100 people who click the link below 30% off your first coffee. Just click the link in the description below, and uh, they also sent me another one to try out, which uh, I just tried this morning, and it's really good. Cheers. Transformations have been a big part of my work as an animation producer and I've been hired for a lot of gigs specifically because the client wanted something in the narrative to transform. It's a big demand. They find that in film they can't do these transformations in such a free way that, that 2D animators can. 2D animation segments within their live action film and when you cross over the mediums like that you get some interesting results. But we gotta start off at the basics here with basic morphing. As an exercise, I thought I would doodle some iterations of the transformation going between the same two key frames each time, a square and a circle. So very, very simple starting parameters. I tried to make these range from simple ideas to slightly more complex ideas and bring in more animation principles as I do so. Number one, starting off with the most simple. This appears to be the path of least resistance, at least mentally. It's the first thing that came to mind as well. It's probably the first thing that came to your mind when you thought of morphing these two shapes together. Number two, we have this one. There was this kind of imaginary line in my mind sweeping across. And where that imaginary line was, I had the square break down into the circular form. Pretty simple, it has a digital feel to it, like a scanner or, or a word processor, I suppose. Number three, I went with the same theme but had the circle move round the center point of the two shapes. Here I then exported a later version with easing, just to show what a difference it makes in the quality of the animation to put some easing in. Number five, this one actually breaks the illusion that the square shape holds some two-dimensional volume, it reveals it to instead be made of four untethered lines. In number six, in this one, the square sheds its corners. I brought some anticipation and follow through simply by adjusting the scale of the shapes before and after the transition. Number seven, in this one, I did away with the morphing completely. The change happens over the space of just one frame, but we have some anticipation and follow through to build up to this fast change. I think I could have spent some more time pushing this one to its limits, but it kind of gets the idea across. Number eight, here I introduced 3D volume, and we can see instantly how it sets itself apart from the others for having this feature. There was a noticeable step up in difficulty to draw this one from the others. It also has a more complex easing pattern. I wanted to clearly display the cube shape 
before its transformation so it actually gets slower towards the cube the fully formed cube shape and then speeds up exponentially you might have also noticed that the cube rotates in the opposite direction a little bit just before rotating in the intended direction that's a simple anticipation trick that i worked in at the beginning the motion blur effect was used to compensate for the reduced frame rate and to add some hand-drawn appeal to the animation. Now we're going to talk about humans and animals and doing it with anatomy and stuff. So for this, you want to link one pose with another. For example, for transforming a human into a bird, I typically use a T pose. So a human with his arms outspread like a bird. And from there, you can see that this human T-pose kind of res closely resembles a bird. So it sets up the transformation for transforming into a bird. It, it seems to make sense as well. For example, the human's head transforms into the bird's head. The human's arm transforms into the bird's wing. It seems to kind of make logical sense. In, in this example where I had the bird diving down, I actually did it in a slightly different pose because the bird transforms into the human which is diving. Uh, so I actually transformed it so that the human would have his arms above his head uh, in the pose that he ends up in. So you can change it and that can be very interesting when you change it. So here are some other ideas you can throw in there to spruce it up and make, make some something really interesting with a completely different idea. You can disintegrate and reform the transforming subject, like I did in this very simple, sketchy style animation I did. So it kind of just breaks into loads of particles and then those particles reform. That can look really nice. You can use something on the character, like the hair. If the character has very long hair, you can have the hair wrap around, um, almost like a cocoon that caterpillars use for their metamorphosis into a butterfly. You could do that with the hair or the clothing. You could do a combination of these things. You could have your transformation involve another object, like maybe the transformation only happens when the character touches water. Transformation linked with motion. I think this is probably the key to creating an appealing transformation, to not just have your character in a static pose while they're transforming, but to actually have a movement link the transformation together. To do this, create a keyframe of the character in one frame and then a keyframe of the transformed character in another frame, but give some distance between these keyframes for the character to move through while they're transforming. After this connection has been made, then you, you got to scrub back and forth through the animation, through the keyframes, just to make sure that everything's evened out nice and smooth with the timing and spacing. So it's going to take a lot of finesse to do that, but it really pays off. So narrative opportunities. Transformations have huge opportunities for narrative um, in ways that other mediums don't. Transformations can create cognitive links between two seemingly very different ideas. And by creating that link between the ideas, you create a meaning that's stronger than the sum of its parts. this Sam Calder commission, I sent him a bunch of different ideas that I thought would be good themes for his animated intro sequence. Um, things like the elements, flight, acrobatics, all things that the Sam Calder brand is known for. And he kind of wanted to do all of them. He wanted to have the diving into the water, the bird flight, the elements all in a very short space of time. So transformations and morphing was the key to this, that we could link up all of these seemingly very different ideas to, to unite them all in one brand. But I started off with keyframes. And so I had a keyframe of the flame. I had a keyframe of the water droplet. 
had a well it's more like thumbnail drawings or storyboards i had a, a drawing of the bird drawing of the dive i just had them as drawings that weren't animated yet i didn't start at frame one no i didn't start at frame one i started with the drawings now that i had the drawings laid out i could look at them and think of ways to link them up first of all it made sense for the elements to come first the elements are the most basic building blocks of creation really so the water droplet then turning into the plant i knew that i wanted that order so now i had the drawing of the water droplet a drawing of the plant and now i could focus on just how to get from one to the other that's all i needed to focus on for that part and i went through like that until i had ideas for each of the transformations then i could go through and do the the drawing that would define the transformation. And then from there, I, I properly animated it and made sure that they were all linking up smoothly. Straight Ahead is starting with a drawing and then making the next drawing and just seeing where that process leads to with no real plan of what's going to happen next. You can actually go through this method with just a straight ahead method and that could work to tremendous effect. The straight ahead method is marvelous for this kind of free flowing animation which doesn't have any burdens and is very spontaneous. However, with this being a client commission and with clearly defined elements and points I needed to hit, places I knew I needed to arrive at with the drawings, at least part of my approach was to have a pose to pose method to start off. Also the purest straight ahead method can have some downsides. For one, it can be hard to tell when you've actually arrived at the finished form of the morph. Furthermore, it is also hard to, without planning, have something form into a good solid drawing. It's more likely that if you are morphing into something without the plan first that you will morph into a drawing which is somewhat misshapen and not so well thought out or detailed. It takes some experience and intuition to know when is a good time to just let the drawing flow with straight ahead animation and when to tie it down with some structure in some pre-planned keyframes. The method I use most of all is actually a combination of straight ahead and pose to pose. I create a layer above with a faint outline of the end drawing and, and that shows that it's the place I need to get to. With that transparent frame always there for me to see, I can do whatever I like to these lines in a straight ahead style of animating and I know where I need to get to eventually. So this method gives me a lot of freedom but it also helps me to get where I need to get to. So here are some inspirations. Glenn Keane's duet, there's a fantastic transformation in this where the girl leaps and in a single leap she grows by like four or five years. That's a fantastic piece of animation there. I thought that was so inspiring. So Howl's Moving Castle, fantastic film, really amazing film. They have a few scenes in this where transformations are really important and one that I think is very inspiring to me is how they had this character animation with the main character. As she talks about how she, she gets younger right in front of our eyes. I've never really seen it done like that where you see that curse being lifted right in front of your eyes. Uh, it's amazing. Studio Chibli, they've done so many amazing transformations actually. Um, this one at the end of Ponyo is one of my favorites of all time. Yeah, it's in the last scene. There's just something I love about this frantic transformation and keeping that distance, that proximity between the faces of the two characters. I, I just love it. Transformers. Uh, I know people hate on Transformers, but I really like Transformers. Um, I really like the way they transform, you know, where th the way they fold out and uh, the complexity that comes into it. Some of you guys animated transformations as part of the Animated Guild monthly challenge and I'll show a few of them here. Meiru made a fantastic entry. I love how he made the fingers of the hands turn into branches. He affected the order of the transformation by making the arms twist around before turning into the tree. 
and he joined the transformations up with some nice swift movement at the end to turn back into a seed. It loops round seamlessly. So well done Meiru, I really like that one. Digital Pops had a fantastic entry where he combined this really nice character animation, really fun, wacky character animation with the transformation starting with the hand which allowed him to continue the expressions of the character losing control of his body. Uh, well done, it was really nice entry. So you can now see a collection of all of the entries for that transformation monthly challenge um, on the second channel, which is the Animated Guild community channel. So uh, the link to that will be in the description. Make sure you go over there and check it out. And my last message is to experiment. Use the lessons in this video to try things, try new things. It's really fun to make these transformations. It's one of the most fun things about animation. And just know that when you're making a transformation, there are an almost infinite amount of ways that you can get from one thing to another. Remember, Trade is giving the first 100 people who click the link below 30% off your first coffee. Just click the link in the description below and use my code WIMSHURST. So you've got to spell my name right if you want to get that discount. Too many of you are misspelling my name. So I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.